Welcome to the Beaver Dam Betting Show on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Sitting alongside me is Corey Sparks, the resident fantasy expert in the office. I'm Charlie Dern. Uh, this week we've got our highs and lows. Um, for me, more lows than highs. Uh, we've got some picks. Uh, we've got our squad parlay. Uh, and then we're going to start our canceled list. Um, teams that we will not bet on and we will not place in our fantasy lineups at any cost at all. We won't do it. Um, Corey, I had a really, really bad week. It's going to um, happen, man. It's yeah. going to happen. I'm feeling for you. It didn't start out good, and it didn't end good either. And the middle part was kind of rough. <laughs> it was all bad. All of it was bad, and it never got better. It was All of it was bad. I was at the Packer game on Thursday night against the Lions. Um, that was not a good time. I mean, it's always fun to be at a Packers game, but I didn't have fun. Um, the Brewers got swept. Uh, that finished up last night. I don't even want to talk about the Brewers. I'm going to start. Sour subject. They're, they're going to kick me off the air if I start talking about the Brewers. Um, and then my picks were a complete disaster. So we'll get into all of it. Um, last week we started with the positives, um, but I think I need to get it off my chest talking about my lows. Um, but before I do that and before I get kicked off the air, uh, what were your lows this You'll week? You'll hand it off to me. I'll buy yeah. you a couple minutes, Charlie, so you can cool down and maybe not get kicked off the air. We'll start with Jameer Gibbs. He's still not the main back. Uh from a fantasy perspective, this is extremely frustrating. We kind of saw this with Dan Campbell's squad last year. It was the Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift dynamic. The workload went to Jamal Williams. He was doing all the dirty work. And then DeAndre Swift, at least when he was healthy, would get touches. Obviously younger, quicker, out in the open field. It is the same exact prototype from what I've seen so far with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. So Monty leading the entire league in terms of running backs with 12 broken tackles so far. If you're a Jameer Gibbs owner, that's kind of bad news for you. If you want to buy right now, I think it's a phenomenal opportunity. We're going to look at this one as glass half full. I know it's a low, but we saw this theme all of last year. Monty had 30-plus touches in a key game against Green Bay. I wouldn't bank on Gibbs being used a ton yet. But down the road, I mean, when you have somebody averaging more than five yards a carry, I like it a lot. Second and final one for me, Chiefs defense got pushed around by Zach Wilson. More of a personal story, but I needed the Chiefs defense to get nine points. Thought it was going to be easy if Zach Wilson just played like we're used to see him playing. And, uh... Yeah, that didn't happen. So uh, that just that just shows you can never really ride off into the sunset, turn off the game, think it's over. I watched the first two drives and thought, you know what, that's that's going to be it. Zach Wilson came in with the element of surprise, went toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. I think this is just a lesson to all of us that literally anything is possible. Yeah, nobody understands the Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery thing. I was mm -hmm. sitting behind or in front of some Lions fans at the Packer game. I'm sure everybody saw how many Lions fans were there. Nobody understood that, especially with David Montgomery being a late uh, start uh, for the Lions. And then, yeah, the, the Chiefs, that was just weird. I, I don't really want to think too hard about that. I think the Chiefs will rebound just fine, and I don't see Zach Wilson continuing to do that. Um, of course, we'll see. My lows, uh, I went 0-4 on picks. I, everything that I gave out lost, um, and a lot of them were kind of impressive. Close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's almost as hard to go four and zero as it is going zero and four. I, it was just a disaster. Um, yeah, I had the Dolphins kicker uh, Jason Sanders to make or over one and a half field goals. He didn't attempt a field goal. Second um, week in a row. So yeah, didn't even have a chance. Uh, Chris Olave to score a touchdown. He caught one pass. Um, he got a red zone look. On a deep ball, David Carr's not any good, and it was it was short on him. Uh, Love misses over by two yards on the longest rush, being 10 and a half. He only rushed it twice, so it barely had a chance at hitting. And then Chris Godwin still didn't score a touchdown with Mike Evans not in the game for a majority uh, while he was hurt with a hamstring. Um, and then another low, I was at the Packers game. I won't even get into it. <laughs> and then the Brewers won't do it. I just won't do it. They... <laughs> We'll I'm, take the high road. Ugh, yeah, I'm just. We'll move on to the highs. Let's okay. just let's turn it around. <laughs> let's get positive. There we go. We need good uh, motivation, good karma, moving into the into the next week of NFL football. Corey, I see that you like. Are you you were successful with Christian McCaffrey once again? Yeah, one of the uh, reasons I went two for three on guesses, or I guess three for four if you include the group parlay. Took the over on 80 and a half rushing yards for CMC. I mean, behind that amazing offensive line, kind of hard to miss when you've got Trent Williams just shoving people out of the way with one arm up there. Niners offensive line is healthy. They're favored. If all that happens, let the game script play to your favor. And it, and it has, right? The Niners are 4-0. Oh. 
Um, we look at CMC averaging over 24 touches a game, and he's on pace for 2,500 all-purpose yards. We can't really play the small sample size card much longer, right? I mean, we're four games in. If he keeps this up, we could see some history. In three of the four years that CMC has played a full season, he's finished top two in standard PPR leagues. Really hard to swerve this guy. They pushed the line all the way up to 90 rushing yards this week, so I think the odds makers kind of learned their lesson. We'll see if they do it. And um, Jake Ferguson's the real deal. Um, I've talked about this on and off the air. Dallas is officially, I'm declaring them tight end heaven. I mean, we had Jason Witten, we had Dalton Schultz for a few years. Now we have Jake Ferguson. This wasn't tied to any of our picks last week, but I mean, this mention is to help all of you. Jake Ferguson is still available in about half of fantasy leagues right now. Despite the fact he's tight end eight, um, again, a lot of consistency. And what I love most, it's my favorite stat with him. He leads all pass catchers in the entire NFL with 10 red zone targets. He's tied at 10 with somebody else I just... There's a lot to like about him, especially in this tight end market where we're kind of just scraping for points. So I like Jake Ferguson. Yeah, and Jake Ferguson was former Wisconsin Badger. Yep. I've always loved him. Uh, do you ever worry at all about Shoemaker? <clears throat> that kind of just throws it to whatever tight end he sees. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Do you think anything about that? At that point, I kind of just play the rule of thumb of if you have a productive offense, which through four weeks Dallas has been, even with that trip up against the Cardinals, a lot of people had chances. I think he's going to be fine. All right. Um, my highs, I had the Texans plus three against Pittsburgh. Uh, of course, I didn't give that out on the show, uh, so of course it hit. Um, <laughs> right. I, can't, I couldn't really tell if that was the Texans being that good or if it was the Steelers being that bad. But either way, C.J. Stroud looks great, and I think that we have to continue looking at the Texans, maybe even to win the, to win the division uh, with the Jags not looking like themselves, or at least what we thought they'd be. I thought that Trevor Lawrence would be putting on an MVP year, their offense doesn't look good at all. He's thrown, I think, two or, or he's got four touchdowns on the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's got only one a game. I don't know. I, I'm weary on the Jags. Uh, and then I took the Bears Broncos over 46 and a half. That hit. Um, I was never going to give out a bet on the Broncos Bears game. Uh, that was the ultimate like loser game and I'm sorry I know you're a Bears fan. Yeah, no, no, I will fully acknowledge it. That was <laughs> that was as close to a game as you can get where you should maybe consider calling the number if you're betting on that game. Um but I have a I problem. I did take the over. I saw there be I thought there'd be points with two bad defenses and there was. It came close down at the end there, but uh thankfully the Bears really didn't uh you know hold their own on defense and yeah. I don't think they really ever will this year. Um, let's move on to our lessons that we learned. Um, we got to get something out of the weekend where we can move forward and get better, both as fantasy uh, players and betters. Um, what are your two lessons that you learned? Yeah, first one, beware of blowouts. Big Tony Pollard buyer this year. We saw the great efficiency with him, obviously, outdoing Ezekiel Elliott last year, comes into the running back one spot. He's been super efficient. Um, he did nothing wrong this week. He only touched the ball 14 times, though, which is not ideal. That's because Dallas blew the doors off a team again, 38-3 uh, to three over New England. So it's really hard to predict blowouts. I'm not going to have you sit here, any of you, look at a game and go, oh, what if they win by 30 and the backups are in? But that is what happened. It was all Deuce Vaughn by the fourth quarter. Uh, Rico Dowdle a little bit too. Again, hard to predict blowouts, but if you see a really wide spread, we've got a couple 10, 11-point spreads here. The opposing QB is maybe out. We got the last second thing with uh, the Browns. You know, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> you go for somebody who you think is actually going to play the full game, which is actually like, for example, with C.D. Lamb this week, a lot of people are saying it's a really tough matchup against the 49ers. I'm kind of looking glass half full here and saying, hey, at least he's going to play all four quarters. I really don't see a scenario where the Cowboys win this game by blowout. If anything, it might go the other way, which if you're down by a few possessions, you go throw heavy. So it's good to have that running back one. I absolutely harped on this last week, and of course I got bit in the butt for it. Good to have a running back one and a winning team unless they win by 30. Then understand, yeah, the backups might be in and his day might be done. Yeah, I uh, I can definitely say that I was disappointed with the Cowboys somehow, even though they won by <laughs> 31. Uh, and that's just because I have Dak and CD stacked on a fantasy yeah. team. Um, so that didn't really work out. They just got like 14 points, which is fine. But in a close game, they probably score way more than that, especially with their connection that they always have every game. Um, the first lesson I learned is don't fly too close to the sun. Um, I was Icarus this weekend. I was betting props that I normally don't play. Uh, I'm not really that great at props in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I was, you know, Jason Sanders. Yeah, like, oh, sure, the Dolphins are going to kick field goals now. That game was touchdowns 
only. Like they haven't kicked a field goal in three weeks now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. And so that one, I mean, I know that you can say regress to the mean and, and they'll have to kick them eventually. And watch them hit them this week. They're going to probably kick field goals oh, now yeah. that I'm not giving it out or anything. Murphy's Law. Yep. Uh, and so I ended up uh, by playing Jamar Chase over 86 and a half receiving yards. Um, the Bengals' offense is horrible, so maybe don't bet on – any of their overs. Uh, Joe Burrow is like last in the league or lowest, lowest bottom five in the league in almost every passing stat right now. Probably don't bet on the overs. Uh, I did that because of, of course, Jamar caught 12, the week, 12 passes the week before that. So I, I hopped on him and I was too late. Um, the other lesson I learned is just flat out the Giants are horrible. They're horrible. I, I don't know. Well, on last week's show, we talked about the Monday night game because you had Kenneth Walker's touchdown, yeah. which hit. Yep. Um, and we saw that the line was Giants minus one, and we both looked at each other and said, how are who, they favored? Who set that? Yeah. Who in their right mind looked at that team with or without Saquon Barkley, and you said before we turned the mics on today that a running back really doesn't affect the line, and said, yeah, the Giants are going to go out and win this football game in prime time under the lights against a Seahawks team that hasn't looked bad, right? Mm-mm. Yeah, I so I guess the game ended up closing. I think it was Seahawks minus two or two and a half, so it completely flipped over. Um, but I took the over in that game. I think I had 47. Uh, and a lot of times in an over, it takes two teams to tango. You know, you need yep. both teams to score points in order for that to happen. And the Giants ended up with three points. I think they're setting records now for how low uh, or how <laughs> few points they've scored so far this season. Great or at company. Least through four weeks. Um, and then the Seahawks, they didn't even need to do anything. They didn't need to pass the ball. They didn't need anything. I won a fantasy game because DK Metcalf didn't need to do anything. He needed like 15 points to beat me with DK. He didn't even get there because the Seahawks just ran the ball, ran the ball, ran the ball, and the Giants couldn't do anything about it. And that offense is – the Giants' offense is horrible, and Daniel Jones doesn't look like the guy that they paid $46 million, <sighs> which that's a whole other – and I, I don't know why they didn't just give him – uh, the ten million dollars for one year on um, on that deal, but they ended up doing what four or three years for forty six. He has to at least have two guaranteed years on this deal. There's going to be a restructure. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a whole mess. They're absolutely going to restructure. Um, well, we're going to go to break, and on the other side, we have some fantasy advice. Uh, we're going to start the canceled list. Um, a couple of picks and a few touchdown scores, along with our group parlay. Um, for this week's action on uh, NFL Week 5 uh, on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Welcome back to the Beaver Dam betting show on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Uh, Corey, let's get right into it with the second half of the show. Um, we'll go right into the canceled list. So this is a list that I've kind of been putting together over the last few years. Uh, every year I do one. If a team or player makes it onto this list, I under no circumstances will bet on them, and I will not play them on my fantasy team. Hands off. All right. Just not going to do it. It's a way to show restraint. It's a way to, you know, really just build it into your mind that Find you're not going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> control. Exactly. Um, so right now on my list, um, I'll go over them real quick, and then we'll kind of dive into it a little bit. I've got the New York Giants, Mac Jones, the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm. and prop builders. Um, a lot of them can be kind of understood without even saying much. Uh, the New York Giants, they scored three points against the Seahawks, who have one of the lower-tier defenses in the league yeah. uh, last week. So after that game, I said I will not ever bet on them the rest of the season, uh, and they will not come off the list until next year restarts. And I'll keep the list on hand in case I need to go back and remember what the Giants did to me, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, and then I've got Mac Jones. Uh, well, I guess the Patriots kind of canceled him too. Yeah. It looks like he might be done in New England. Uh, I don't think he has it. I will not draft him on my fantasy teams. I will not place him in any lineups. I won't trade for him. I won't pick him up. I won't do it. I don't think he has it. And I think that it's going to be Bailey Zappi time moving forward pretty soon. I don't know if he's starting this week, but uh, I think Bailey Zappi is going to really see some, uh, some snaps coming up. Uh, I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I mentioned earlier in the show that I bet on the Texans as almost a Steelers fade. I don't believe in Matt Canada and his offense. I think Kenny Pickett's in trouble. I think Najee Harris is in trouble. Deontay Johnson's still out. 
poor George Pickens. Man. Oh my, <laughs> that stinks for him because he's in one of the worst offenses in the league, and he's a great player. I don't see it with the Steelers this year. I know everybody loves Mike Tomlin and thinks that he's always going to get his eight and eight season because he literally always has mm -hmm. um, gone at least five hundred. I don't think they have it this year. That defense is still awesome, but when you're betting on a team, you also need them to score points. Uh, so I'm not going to do it with the Steelers. Uh, and then prop builders, That this is completely just a personal thing. I stink at prop builders. So placing a couple props together into a parlay, and a lot of times they have tons of juice. Um, I'll do them on the sake of this show, uh, and, and when it's a group parlay, I'll do it. Um, but I will do my best to not contribute any props to those parlays that we put together. I'm done with prop builders. That's fair. Giants stick out to me, man. We talked about it before. Still baffling that Daniel Jones is making a little over $40 million a year right now. A shorter deal, so at least they're not locked in for too long, but yeah, Brian Dable doesn't seem too happy. So we'll start with mine. We've got Sky Moore, Gabe Davis, the Broncos as a whole, and Jahan Dotson. So Sky Moore, this will be the big rant. I'll get him out of the way. <laughs> Six and a half points per game in fantasy PPR right now. He's ranked at number 69 among wide receivers, yet for some reason... Half of you own him. Uh, <laughs> half of leagues have a team that decided, you know what, Sky Moore is going to break out at some point. Um, it can't be about what he has done. He has one game over the course of about a year and a half now with at least 10 fantasy points. Can't be about what he's doing. He's in for half the snaps. Um, it's got to be what he's going to do. And we've been playing that game for about a year and a half, and I'm frankly done with it. Never got on the train. Um, definitely would have jumped off it by now. Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice have beat him in targets significantly. I understand it's Patrick Mahomes. Sky Moore is not a pivotal part in this offense. I, I don't know how else to phrase it. I would just avoid him. Um, judging by the fact he's pretty valued right now, you could probably get away with trading him for something because for whatever reason, there's a great appeal around him. So this is on my cancel list. It should also be on yours. We'll go to the Denver Broncos next. Fade them down the road, especially this week. This will be an all-time high for Sean Payton and that team. They went from giving up 70 to winning a football game, but it was against the Bears. Now it's against the Jets defense. We'll talk about their strengths in a bit in another pick. They are no joke. Uh, let's see if this team can build any actual momentum, but I really don't care to find out. The Broncos are gross right now. Gabe Davis, extremely inconsistent. He had a reception for 35 yards not long ago, and it was a touchdown. That is Gabe Davis in a nutshell. Not a lot of volume. He could either boom and get you 10, 20, 30, and then you invest in him. You go get him. You start him. You say, I'm just going to chance it this once, and he'll get you three. Not chancing that at all. Jahan Dotson, not in the most exciting offense. We will see it in all of its glory tonight. Maybe it'll actually look good because it's against the Bears. Uh, Terry McLaurin leads the way with 26 targets in this wide receiving core. Logan Thomas is playing a pivotal role. Curtis Samuel has 20 targets. And Brian Robinson Jr. is playing out of his mind and getting a lot of volume, too. Jahan Dotson, kind of just an afterthought after having seven receiving touchdowns last year. Yeah, I, I know that Gabe Davis has treated me well in the past, but I, I definitely make sure to never draft him onto my team just so I don't have to deal with the temptation of putting into my, him into my lineup it's not when fun, he's man. sitting on my bench. <laughs> Because every year or every week, the, the projections are going to say he'll get eight or nine and he'll catch one or two passes. And, you know, he is a fun player. He's a big target. And Josh Allen as his quarterback will always be nice. But, yeah, I, I can't do it with him either. Uh, let's move on to our picks. You know, we got that out of our system. We yeah. got the venting done. I feel good. Um, and now that we have that down, we'll make sure to keep that in mind when we're making our picks. Uh, and we'll keep the list going and we'll keep it running. Um, my first one, I've got Thursday Night Football, Bears Commanders. Commanders are a six and a half point favorite. Total is 44 and a half. I've got the under in this one. Okay. Um, I said it earlier, I don't really think that betting on Bears games is a good idea for your mental health. Um, it's just not a fun time. Um, in this game, we thought that the Bears Broncos was going to be one of the worst games of the year. Probably mm -hmm. still could be. Uh, I think that this one on Thursday night, short week, the Bears still have all this noise going on around them. I think that this has a real chance of being the worst game of the season. Oh, yeah. And, and people don't really haven't really talked about it that way. So far, I know people wish that we would have had baseball going on tonight so they wouldn't have to watch this game. We've got a bet for you later. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, all right. The Bears have gone under the total in five of their last six games against the NFC East. Um, Washington home unders have hit in seven straight games. Uh, and Washington unders have hit in the last 13, 13 of their last 19 Sheesh. games. So I really do like this under. I don't see the Bears putting together an offense that can score against the Commanders defense. It's actually pretty solid. The Broncos defense is horrible, and that's why the Bears look good. And, yeah, they might have gained some confidence, but I still don't see it against the Commanders. In the Commanders, I don't love their offense in general. Sam Howell's all right. He's pretty inconsistent. They did have a good game against the Eagles, but that was kind of sloppy on the Eagles' part. I didn't really see a ton. I still don't really believe in the Eagles. That's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, yeah, uh, and then I see for your first pick, you've got to play in the Broncos-Jets game. The Jets are a one-and-a-half-point favorite over under of 43-and-a-half. Yeah, I just talked about how you should ignore the Broncos in terms of fantasy. In betting, I will be taking the over on interceptions with Russell Wilson. It's set at half. Look, he started out strong right now. Nine touchdowns to two interceptions. If anything does look good, it's kind of the offense. But again, it's Sean Payton. And, and the team just really hasn't looked all that good. This is still the same team that a couple of weeks ago gave up 70 and was essentially phased out of the game plan against Miami. Look, this is a stark difference. We go from playing against the Bears who were missing Eddie Jackson, so their lead safety, and then their lead cornerback in Jalen Johnson. And now it's the Jets, who have picked off Josh Allen three times and Patrick Mahomes twice. Russ has started off hot. He just went up against arguably, not even arguably anymore, the worst team in the <laughs> NFL. Going up against a Jets team that's actually hanging pretty tough. This one's pretty easy for me. I, uh, for my second pick, I went homer on this one. I, okay. I, I did. I normally like to separate church and state. I like to separate my heart from my wallet. Um, but I took the Packers minus one. I think this is a huge bounce back, bounce back spot for the Packers. Um, the Raiders aren't good. They're not good. Uh, the Packers have a better coach. Uh, Josh McDaniels, not a good coach. I think he actually might get fired by the end of this year. Yeah. Um, Jimmy G is coming back, so a little worry there, but I don't think he's any good. And the Packers secondary is pretty solid, and Jimmy G leads lead in picks, even though he's missed a game. Um, so I'm okay with this. Uh, the Packers are 5-0 and against the spread in their last five games against the Raiders, uh, and they've won eight straight games outright against the Raiders. Um, the only other worry that I really have is that this is Devontae Adams coming home to Green Bay. There is so that. I, I could see him going off a little bit, especially with Jimmy G just needing a guy that's going to be open every time, and that's going to be him. Jair Alexander should come back. Um, a lot of the Packers are coming back that were hurt previously. We had this mini bye with a Thursday night into the Monday night. Uh, so I think that it's going to be fine, and I, I really like the Packers in this uh, bounce back spot. So Packers, we said we wouldn't do Packers minus one. Or we said we wouldn't take the minus one or one and a half. But here we are. <laughs> but we're back, and we're, we're doing it. Packers minus one. It's better than taking the money line. They're going to win this game by more than a point. There we go. I think I like it a lot, especially with the Raiders' struggles. Packers are getting healthier again. Health is wealth. My second lock is Gus Edwards over 43 and a half rushing yards. He went 15 for 48 yards against Cleveland last week. Not the best at all, but Cleveland's front has been really tough. They only allow 3.2 yards per carry. His new opponent is Pittsburgh. Staying in the division, they've allowed 4.7 yards per carry, one of the worst marks in the league. And Baltimore, Charlie, runs the ball more than anybody else. They do it 55% of the time, which in this day and age, pretty baffling. I feel pretty confident about Gus Edwards here. All right, uh, back, or on to the touchdown scores. I've got Bijan Robinson, anytime touchdown. Okay. Uh, the Texans' defense has allowed the most rushing touchdowns in the league at seven. Uh, three the first week, three the second week, uh, one week three, and then they didn't allow any uh, to the Steelers. But like we said earlier, that doesn't say a whole lot about, right. about that. Uh, the Texans rank nine, number nine in most rushing yards per attempt. Uh, and Bijan has only scored one touchdown this season. So I actually think that Bijan's due for maybe one, maybe two touchdowns in this game, uh, and he hasn't gotten a rushing touchdown either. That was through the air. So I think that he is definitely due for a touchdown, and I think he's going to get one this week against the Texans. Yeah, it seems like a match made in heaven. And then we've got anytime touchdown scorer Brees Hall. I liked this one anyway, and then we were sitting at our desks, and you broke the news to me. He's supposed to get more touches, which is very exciting, considering this guy's averaging six yards a carry. Delvin Cook... He's averaging two and a half, stark difference, kind of hard to watch. We just need red zone touches uh, versus this Broncos defense that has allowed seven rushing touchdowns in four games. This should be an easy slam. Yeah, and I'm a Dalvin Cook owner in a fantasy league, so I when I saw that news, I, <laughs> I apologize. yeah, that was a bad idea. I don't know what I was thinking. I think it was like the fifth round or something, so I was like, he's got to go at this point. Okay. That's neither here nor there. That is over now, and I'm in the trade market for a back. There we go. Yep. Uh, all right, so for the parlay. Uh, we're 0-for-1 on the parlay. Uh, we did not hit it. I had Godwin. Um, that didn't hit, so that blew us up right there. Um, but for my parlay pick this week, I've got the Packers Raiders over 45. Okay. Uh, and I said it before, I normally like to separate church and state, wallet from my heart, but I had to do this. Um, I think that with this being a Packers bounce-back spot against a bad Raiders defense, I like us to bounce back and get some more points. Last week's offense looked horrendous. I don't think that that can be repeated. The Lions' defense is better than I thought, mm -hmm. um, and they really rattled Jordan Love early in that game, and it took it away. Uh, the Packers rank number three in most rushing yards per game. The Raiders rank number seven. Uh, the Raiders won't have to worry about that against the Packers' rushing game, but I won't get into that either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the Packers' boomer bust offense this year, I do think that this is then that uh, boom week. 
Uh, and then I talked about Devontae and Jimmy G coming back together. Um, and then this game also opened at 42 and a half and 43. So the problem with 45 is we're not getting the best of the number. I still think it goes over, but there's a chance that it does finish in that 43, 44 range, and it could get a little sweaty. Uh, you've got a baseball pick. Yeah, I thought I'd take the mind off football on this wonderful Thursday evening where we have the Commanders and Bears. So we're going to go Dodgers minus a run and a half. It's playoff Clayton Kershaw. The D-backs already used Zach Gallen. We're awaiting their probable. Overall, the Dodgers are healthy. They're stacked, bigger market. I feel like people are pretty high on the D-backs after... I won't bring up the series, but I think they're too high on them. We'll go Dodgers minus one and a half here. All right, for the final pick, we've got a couple to pick from. Um, I'm going to read off some picks, and then we'll kind of land on one, and we'll go from there. Uh, I like Dolphins first half minus six and a half. Uh, they're overall minus 11 against the Giants. I really like the first half just because the Dolphins just lost. Giants just got blown out. Giants are canceled, so we're not going to worry about them. But the Dolphins uh, making a splash early, I like that. I like the Colts. Um, to potentially get a win over the Titans. I, I think the Titans aren't better than the Colts. I just don't, uh, but they have the better coach there. Um, Jets plus one and a half over the Broncos. Chris Olave anytime touchdown, and the Saints kicker Blake Groupie uh, over one and a half field goals. Uh, which of those do you think we should put into our parlay? I'm, I'm riding with Anthony Richardson here. Looks healthy, back from the concussion. The Titans have done anything but improve in terms of their secondary. The only thing that they did well against the Bengals and the reason they were able to blow them out is because they bull rushed a Joe Burrow who is currently hopping on one leg consistently. So I think we're going to roll with the Colts money line here. All right, so we've got a little bit of a multi-sport parlay uh, to finish this up. We've got Packers Raiders over 45. We've got the Colts money line at plus 110. And we've got Dodgers minus one and a half. Uh, and that'll be a wrap on the Beaver Dam betting show on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Thanks, as always, for joining us. You can find these episodes online at dailydodge.com. Uh, and uh, good luck this weekend in NFL Week 5 and the MLB playoffs on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN.